Ten months ago, the Arizona Cardinals gave Cliff Kingsbury a contract extension and a nice one. There's a picture of Kingsbury in his estate with the open windows sitting there watching film. You know he's got the hot girlfriend. They gave him an extension through 2027. He got fired yesterday. He got fired yesterday, and the GM, Steve Keim, he stepped down as well. Now, here's the deal. If teams are smart, they'll get back to accountability. You got to do the whole diversity thing. We understand that. Totally understand it. You got to. But if you really get down to it, I'm talking about a general manager's job here, and you really study it, the only guy these guys should hire is Ryan Grigson. Grigson won big time with the Colts. I'm just telling you. Accountability is back, baby. Kirby Smart telling his quarterback after they scored like 50, hey, you weren't good enough, and him accepting it. If I'm an owner, I'm like, I want that in my life. The Jacksonville Jags, why do you think they got good? Because Urban Meyer at least brought a little bit of accountability into the place before they all whined, cried, bitched, moaned, and got him out of there. And then the other thing, which is completely idiotic, right? They're going to let Kyler Murray have a say in the new coach. Uh, Yeah, I said that. I want to let that wash over me for a second. Kyler Murray is so ridiculous at his job and so unlikable, his teammates don't like him, he had to have in his contract a a four-hour-a-week study session. Don't be on the Internet. Don't be playing video games, little Kyler. Don't do it. Because, well, we would like you to do your job that we're paying you hundreds of millions for. I guess if you're going to pay an idiot $230 million, I guess you probably should let him have a say in the coach. But I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it at all. Um, you and I were talking. Kingsbury now is owed, what'd you say, $30 million over the course, the life of this contract, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. He he got a pay raise from about five, five and a half million to seven and a half million with this extension he signed last spring. And he's going to have that paid out to him at least for the next four years, and that fifth year was an option year. But until another NFL franchise opts to hire Cliff Kingsbury in some capacity, that's going to be owed to the Bidwells. And it was the Bidwells doing. Michael Bidwell, team president and owner, signed he and Steve Keim to those extensions last spring following the 11-6 and season. But subsequently, the team underperformed. That's putting it mildly this year at 4-13. and So in an effort to get a clean slate for Kyler Murray and the rest of the Arizona Cardinals and their fan base, you had to part ways with them, and in doing so, you got to write a fat check. Johnny, I want to go back. Um, let's go back 11 and 6. And okay, the playoff didn't go the way it want, wanted to. Kyler Murray struggled in the playoff game, fine. But they were 11 and 6, and Kingsbury yeah. would have gone, I think you said, into a lame duck season. How much of the season, in your view, Maybe it's none, maybe it's a bunch. So uh, was kind of circumvented with the publicity given to Kyler Murray's contract, specifically the, the, the amount of money and, you know, that whole four-hour deal that he had to study. I mean, that's divisive, it seems to me, going way back. Yeah, and I'll give Cliff Kingsbury credit. Usually he was the one that had to face the media and clean up all these external messes that were happening off the field. They also, by the way, had to fire two coaches – in season, one for a domestic violence charge and the other for potentially groping a woman in Mexico City during their Monday night football game. So Cliff, is he a great NFL coach? I don't know, but he's an adult and he's a professional and he took a lot of arrows when the organization probably took should have took them for him. But as far as the Kyler Murray saga goes, it was kind of a cloud over the offseason. But again, you win games in the fall in the NFL. That goes away. And that study clause, that came specifically directly from owner Michael Bidwell. And should they have put that in there? No. And and the blowback is considerable. They regret putting it in. I know that for a fact. And, you know, Kyler is a committed player when he's in the building. He gets along with just about everybody. He studies hard in the building. It was when he left the facility, they weren't 100% sure or confident that that was going to continue. And here's what I will say. The Bidwells, Michael Bidwell, they've never handed out this kind of money before. $230 million. They've never had a homegrown franchise quarterback. So everybody was kind of playing in new waters a little bit. But make no mistake, 
Kyler Murray, his agent, Eric Burkhart, knew exactly what they were doing over the course of the offseason to make sure he got paid. And then look what happened. He tore his ACL. So it's a good thing if you're Kyler Murray, he got paid. All right. Last year, Hard Knocks came into the Colts. And everybody said, no, it's no big deal. No, we don't mind. No. You know what happened to the start of this year? I asked the same people, and they're like, yeah, it was a pain in the backside. I mean, I'm telling yeah. you. Like, it, like, yeah, we're so glad mm-hmm. to have these damn cameras out, right? I mean, I, honest to God, when you're going through it, everybody's on board, Johnny. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. I say a distraction. What say you? Well, I mean, it, it's. I would say it's not great for a team that maybe has aspirations of the postseason and everything that could go wrong does go wrong. I think the Cardinals, when they signed up for this, thought it would be a showcase of their renewed culture. They've got their GM, their head coach, and their quarterback all locked in. And then you fast forward by the end of Hard Knocks, which airs the last episode tomorrow on HBO. The GM's gone. He's taken a leave of absence. Kyler Murray's gone. Kyler Murray's basically had no screen time during Hard Knocks, especially since his ACL tear. And Cliff Kingsbury's going to be fired in tomorrow's episode. I think Hard Knocks is better suited if if you're going to force teams to do it in season for a team that's almost assured a postseason berth, a Kansas City, a Buffalo every year. The Cardinals, while they did make the playoffs last year, and you have to give them credit for that, they were not stable enough to be able to have hard knocks in their building. They bit off more than they can chew, and the episodes, frankly, and I watch them, we do a postgame show every Wednesday night, they're a little bit watered down. You can only so show so much J.J. Watt, B-roll, um, having fun, screwing around with the guys, there just there's wasn't enough winning that was involved, and then they were afraid to kind of go the complete opposite end because the Cardinals, make no mistake, every team that's on a hard knocks in season has some say about what's going to be on TV. So it's not the complete inside job, inside baseball that you thought you were getting. Yeah, that, that's the thing. <clears throat> that That's the thing. To, that, and, and I want to go back to that because people think that the teams don't. Uh, Chris Ballard told me the teams have certain editorial rights. Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely do. The Cardinals had a big blow up with running back, Eno Benjamin. There was an altercation after the LA Rams win in Los Angeles that didn't make the show. Why didn't that make the show? The situation with Sean Kugler in Mexico city that didn't make the show. Steve Kimes leave of absence for health concerns was barely a blurb on the show. Kyler Murray, once he tore his ACL, that was it. We never went inside Kyler Murray's home. We never got a tour. We never really got a sense of who Kyler Murray is off the field. So all of that to say, I mean, the the Cardinals had their fingerprints all over hard knocks.